Hello, everyone, and thanks for taking the time to listen to the Cupertino Real Estate Market Analysis for March of 2008. Cupertino is a city here in Silicon Valley, California. My name is Robert Whitelaw. I'm a, a member of the National Association of Realtors, a certified EPRO, and also a licensed real estate broker in the state of California. Let's go ahead and jump into the numbers, what I like to call the supply and demand numbers for the market here in Cupertino. Now, these first numbers we'll see will be the inventory numbers, and that indicates how many homes are actually on the market right now. In, or at least in each in the month of March, looking back all the way to 1999. Next, we'll take a look at the whole number of homes that were listed in the month, and we will also look at how many homes have been sold. Now, we'll start off with those inventory numbers, and the first thing I'd like to point out is the difference between the Cupertino numbers and the numbers that I reported for Santa Clara County. Cupertino is one of the communities that is outperforming the average for the county. Uh, it's one of those those communities that is really propping up the numbers for Santa Clara County. Look at those inventory numbers. We actually saw a decline in the inventory between 2006 and 2007, and the inventory actually stayed the same. The 2007-2008 numbers from the total inventory hasn't changed. It's the same number, 65 homes total, 0% change. We're also seeing the exact same numbers for listings. We saw 53 homes listed in the month of March in 2007 and 53 homes listed in the month of March in 2008. Pretty shocking. The only difference we're seeing, and this might be an indicator of, of a little bit of a tighter market here in Cupertino, is the drop in sales. Now, sales dropped 43.9% for a grand total of 23 homes sold in the month of March in 2008. Now, overall, what I'd say is that... Uh, these numbers actually show a very good balance. If you if you look at the ratio between homes that, that are in the inventory and the number of homes sold, it's still very healthy. It gives us a, a, about 2.8 months worth of homes given the current inventory. If we had the inventory we have now and the sold the the, the uh, number of homes selling stayed the same, we'd be we'd be we'd exhaust our inventory in about 2.8 months, almost three months. That's a healthy number. Anything four or less, I consider to be a, a relatively healthy market. Not like other areas where we've got 30 months, 20 months worth of inventory currently in stock. Now let's go ahead and jump into just the more recent months, looking all the way back to January of 2007. This gives us a better idea of trends. What we're seeing is that we're seeing similar trends, things that you would expect to see given past performance. If you look at March of 2008 and March of 2007, you can see we're getting the same sort of increase in inventory, same sort of increase in listed homes. The real difference is a change in the, in the homes that have sold. Um, the inventory has increased from, from February to March in 2008. The inventory increased 22.6%. The number of homes listed increased 55.9%, and the number of homes sold increased 15%. So that's actually pretty good. Uh, if you look at last year, obviously it was a little bit more robust last year in March, but again, we saw the same trend. We saw the same numbers increasing. So if you look back and you're looking, and you're looking for some sort of a historical reference point, Everything is doing what we would expect it to do when compared to the previous month as, as far as just the seasonal comparison. We had our low in January of 2007. We got our low in January of 2008. So, and we're progressing very normally. So I'm expecting the same sort of numbers in 2007 as we, not as far as, as sales and things like that, but trends. So in other words, in March we see a certain number of sales. Now, in April of 2007, we saw sales just a little bit higher. I would expect to see the same thing this year. Now, here's another difference between Cupertino and the rest of the county. We managed to sustain more of a robust selling period through the summer months. You could argue it was pretty good all the way up till August, uh, whereas the rest of the county saw its selling period far shortened. Uh, April is really where you could argue things ended for Santa Clara County in general and for a lot of communities. Um, April and May, that's that's really where everything ended as far as having a summer season goes. Now, let's go ahead and jump on to home prices for Cupertino in March of 2008. Now, again, this is just comparing the same month of March going all the way back to 1998. And as you can see, a steady rise in average price going all the way back to 2003. This, again, this is counter to what we've been seeing countywide, or the average county numbers. 
And it's also counter to a lot of peripheral communities in the county. So, as again, Cupertino is really sort of defining the curve here on good performance for real estate. Now, the average home price was up 4.3% in 2008 in March. So, compared to the same time, March of 2007, we've had a 4.3% increase. The average home price was $1,311,979 with a median of $1,185,000. And that median number just means the absolute middle of the transactions. So, if there were... Uh, 20 transactions, the, the, the home at the 10.5 position, right there at the middle but of, of all those transactions would be the median. So it's a good way to sort of get a feeling for the distribution of the homes that are being sold in Cupertino. Now, the highest priced home in Cupertino was on Crescent Court, and that sold for $2,495,000 uh, with a listing price of $2,450,000. So, excuse me, I'm sorry, the list price of $2,495,000 sold for $2,450,000. So it sold for just a little bit under asking price, and it sold in 77 days. Uh, the average for the county is less than that as far as days on market. So for a home at that price range to be selling in 77 days really points to the robustness of the market in Cupertino right now. Now, the lowest priced home was on Lori Avenue in Cupertino, and that was listed at $669,500 and it sold for $602,000, but that one was only on the market for 20 days. So we're definitely seeing good performance here in Cupertino as far as home prices go. Now let's go ahead and see that trend in more of a short-term perspective. If we go back, we can see uh, that in March of 2008, obviously we're at a higher point than we were in March of 2007. Uh, interesting note is that in uh, February of 2007, we saw average prices drop. We saw that again this year. All of, again, all of the seasonal trends. We actually saw a bigger jump, though, between January of 2008 and February of 2008 than we did between January and February of 2007. So, again, more signs that the market is far more robust right now uh, in Cupertino than it is in other areas. The average home price, uh, we already discussed, but the, the percentage price change from February of 2008 to March of 2008 was it actually decreased by 0.8%, median price down by 0.4%, and again, the total homes sold were 23. Now, if we go ahead and jump now to the number of days it took to get a home sold in Cupertino, still relatively good numbers here. We, uh, in 2007, a year ago, it was actually taking longer to get a home sold. We've actually seen an improvement this year in March of 2008 down to 33 that's a 19.5% drop, almost a 20% drop in the days that it's taking to get a home sold. You'd almost have to argue that the market here in Cupertino is bulletproof. With the way things are going in the county in general and in other markets, Cupertino is still managing to some robust numbers. Now, let's go ahead and look at the numbers just over the last few months. Now, this is going back to January of 2007. Um you can see some pretty normal numbers until we get to J December and January. January was completely uh, crazy because of just the, num the, the number being so high. I, I wouldn't. I don't know if I'd take that as anything significant. Uh, often those numbers can be thrown off by one home that's substantially overpriced and left on the market for a long time. Uh, we've seen that in other communities like Los Gatos where there's a, a strange statistical blip that throws things off. Wouldn't let that particular no those numbers bother you. Uh, I think that we would normally expect to see an increase in December, and that's on par with, with I think what's normal. But man, look at those numbers going all the way back back to May of last year, 16 days on the market. Now, if we look at February of last year, we see that between February and March, the days on the market actually dropped. Between February and March this year, though, we actually had a net increase. I wouldn't take that as something to get concerned about, but. It, it might be showing that the market's coming into a little bit more of an equilibrium here in, in Cupertino. But given the other numbers we've seen, no question that uh, Cupertino remains a, a very robust mo robust market. So for you buyers out there, uh, Cupertino is showing itself to be a, a pretty amazing place to be owning property. All these folks who own properties now have been managing to enjoy increasing property values in the face of other communities in the area seeing dropping property values. I think that says a lot about what Cupertino has to offer, and, and I, I actually lived in Cupertino for quite a while. I went to uh, you know high school 
right there in, in Cupertino and just uh, have enjoyed a lot of the benefits of the community. It's a great place as far as commute and local employers. And it's a very big, it's a very much of a high tech type town. So that might explain some of the robustness here. But it's also, it doesn't feel as densely packed as some other communities and neighborhoods, particularly if you're talking about San Jose and other areas. That's really about it. If you have any questions, ideas, or concerns, I'd love to hear about them. Feel free to email me at robert at soldbyrobert.com. If you'd like to listen to uh, any of my other video presentations, listen to my podcast, read any of my articles on real estate, you can find those all at my website at www.soldbyrobert.com. You can also find my podcast on iTunes by doing a, a search on real estate realities. And of course, if anyone out there needs any help with real estate in Santa Clara County, I'm more than happy to help you out. Feel free, if it's you or someone you know or a member of your family, give me a call at 408-852-0525, and I'll be happy to help you in any way I can. Thank you very much, and I look forward to talking to you all next time.